Good morning. Today is Saturday, the 23rd of October, and we're in the 29th week of the Church's year. And today's a very year. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty, ever living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty and sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. We continue in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. The reason why those who are in Christ Jesus are not condemned is that the law of the Spirit of life, which in Christ Jesus, has set you free from the law of sin and death. God has done what the law, because of our unspiritual nature, was unable to do. God dealt with sin by sending his own son in a body as a physical, as physical as any sinful body, and in that body God condemned sin. He did this in order that the law's just demands might be satisfied in us, who behave not as our unspiritual nature, but as the spirit dictates. The unspiritual are interested only in what is unspiritual, but the spiritual are interested in spiritual things. It is death to limit oneself to what is unspiritual. Life and peace can only come with concern for the spiritual. That is because to limit oneself to what is unspiritual is to be at enmity with God. Such a limitation never could or never does submit to God's law. People who are interested only in unspiritual things can never be pleasing to God. Your interests, however, are not in the unspiritual, but in the spiritual, since the Spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, unless you possess the Spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. Though your body may be dead, it is because of sin. But if Christ is in you, then your spirit is life itself, because you have been justified. And if the Spirit of him who has raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies through his Spirit living in you. The Word of the Lord. In the Gospel from the Gospel of Luke, we moved on to chapter 13, verses 1 to 9. Some people arrived and told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate has mingled with that of their sacrifices. At this he said to them, Do you suppose these Galileans who suffered like that were any greater sinners than any other Galileans? They were not, I tell you. No. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those eighteen on whom the tower at Siloam fell and killed them, do you suppose that they were more guilty than all the other people living in Jerusalem? They were not, I tell you. No, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. He told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it, but found none. He said to the man who looked after the vineyard, Look here, for three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on the fig tree and finding none. Cut it down. Why should it be taking up the ground? Sir, the man replied, leave it one more year and give me time to dig round it and manure it. It may bear fruit next year. If not, then you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. The letter of Paul to Romans is by all accounts one of the most difficult passages in the New Testament to tease out and give a commentary on. Paul goes very deeply into trying to explain what it is that Christ's death and resurrection means. And he's doing it in terms of the law. And in this passage is to do with the Spirit. The Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And there's a constant contrast between spirit and body. But sometimes the body means the physical body that's alive or dead. And sometimes it's the evil element that is uh, earthly rather than heavenly. And it's not always clear what Paul is referring to. And sometimes he moves from one meaning to another. The overall meaning of this passage, however, is very clear that in Christ the earthly, the negative part of us, dies in, at our baptism and we are new people in Christ. We still have remnants of the old and spend the rest of our life on this earth making sure we stay with a life that is full of the Spirit of God 
and we don't return to a spirit of evil of this earth. Quite exactly what the word earthly means is difficult because our bodies are good, they're gifts of God. It's not as if that you can contrast what is physical with what uh, is immaterial and say one's good, one's bad. Otherwise, that way you end up in um, some form of Manichaean dualism. No, our bodies are good and we're saved, body and soul. The Gospel has got two elements. I want to take the second bit first, about the fig tree. In Luke, the story about the fig tree is a sign of hope. In Matthew, it's a sign of death, the fig tree withers. But in Luke, the story is that Jesus says in the parable, no, let it stay a bit longer. And what the message of this is, that God is patient with us. God is prepared to wait yet again, another day, another year, another year, in case we, were, 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 we are willing to reform, we are willing to convert, we are willing to turn our lives around again. So on the one hand we're being warned, yes, turn your life around immediately, without delay, but equally you can trust in God's patience with you, it's not too late. The first part of the Gospel is about um, the people coming to Jesus and asking and telling him about two events. One is the story which is not recorded elsewhere but is referred to here of a number of worshippers who went to the temple to offer blood sacrifices. From, they were from Galilee, out of towners. And uh, the soldiers of Pilate killed them and to mix their blood with their own sacrifice. And then a second bit is the people who were nearby when the tower at Siloam uh, near the, the spring and uh, clearly there was a, an architectural accident and a wall, well no in this case a tower fell down and the stones fell on a whole lot of people and killed them and in each case Jesus said do you think they were more sinners than anybody else? No! but then goes on to say but be, you be ready too because you never know the same thing may happen to you for me the importance of this passage and I use it quite often in the hospital uh, when talking to people because people have a tendency, or sometimes anyway, of when something bad happens, especially if they get a, a, a very bad diagnosis or something terrible isn't told them. They say, oh, it must have been my fault. I'm guilty. What have I done to deserve this? And Jesus gives the example and says quite adamantly, no, things just happen. They were there and they were the unlucky ones on whom the tower fell or the pilot soldiers that day felt like killing them through no special reason. It comes back to trusting in God. Yes, in this world all sorts of things happen with no special blame attached. Um, things happen by random and one one is called, and this is the point of what I'm saying, is one's called always to trust in God, knowing that random things can happen. One doesn't deserve them, but they can happen all the same. And one carries on trusting in God that things will come right in the long run, no matter what happens. Because this world does not, it doesn't, there isn't a final answer in this world. The final answer is in another world. It's in the world of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. And that's why we can say with absolute certainty, Whatever happens, trust in God and he will look after you. And that, I think, is the message uh, of this passage. We turn to our bidding prayers. Responses, open to us the treasures of your love. Christ became man to make us sons and daughters of God, and he intercedes for us before God our Father. Let us thank him for his loving mercy and pray. Open to us the treasures of your love. You have enlightened us in baptism. We consecrate our day to you. Open to us the treasures of your love. Fill us with praise of you today. May we take your word with us wherever we may go. Open to us the treasures of your love. Teach us to respond to your word like Mary our mother. May your word be fruitful in us. Open to us the treasures of your love. Give us courage when things go wrong. Strengthen us with faith in you, 
with hope in your promises and with love of your will. Open to us the treasures of your love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let the splendour of the resurrection light up our hearts and minds, Lord, scattering the shadow of death and bringing us to the radiance of eternity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All the best. Have a good day.